as Jeff has become a good friend to a number of us, particularly those who used to gather for some years in the prayer barn, which took place uh, once a month, and we had great blessing in that. And I always thought, and we don't want to flatter him, I always thought Jeff very often brought another dimension in word uh, as we gathered together, primarily for prayer. So we thank God for him. He's a retired vicar, so you better be on your best behavior. <laughs> but uh, seriously know that um, Jeff is the sort of person who never retires. And uh, I know he walks miles and miles in prayer walking. So thanks, Jeff. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. I'm going to leave it with you now to share the word of God. Thank you. Come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of thy faithful people. Kindle in each one of us the fire of your love. Repentance and turning away from sin. I almost feel that you know more about it than I do. <laughs> the number of sermons you've heard <laughs> from different people over the years I've certainly given you an appreciation of what it means. So here I am to speak with you, to share with you. And while reading my Bible a couple of days ago, I'm mindful of this invitation to come and share. A particular verse from Ecclesiastes popped out on the page. It was chapter 3, verse 1. There is a time for everything under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die, a time for planting and a time for the harvest. And then the Holy Spirit began to tug at my thoughts. Yes, but what is it time for within the church? What is it time for within the church? Since the end of the Second World War, our nation, which has for centuries been centered around the Christian faith, has been transformed into a multicultural, multi faith, multinational society. Come to think of it, I didn't vote for any of those things to happen, <laughs> but they did. And this is where the policies and decisions of successive governments have brought us. This tsunami of cultural change, coupled with the revolution in technology, has put tremendous pressure on Christian communities. Christian communities which previously relied on parish churches, church schools, charitable services to community, youth work and missionary connections, all of which combined to nurture and present the Christian faith to successive generations of people. It went on like that for yonks. as the influence of the church has diminished over the course of our lifetimes. People have begun increasingly to be swayed by the things of the world. And they look to the things of the world for their values and for their goals. It's brought about the phenomena known as the secular revolution. Glory to God in the highest is being replaced with glory 
to man in the highest. And if England win, it'll be glory to women in the highest as well. <laughs> and the pursuit of wealth and pleasure is now triumphing in people's thinking over the common good. And you can search through all the documents in every governed department of this land and you will not find any reference to the words sin or evil in any one of them. As far as the government is concerned, sin and evil don't officially exist. Everything is now being defined by the terms legality and political correctness. And what is legal or politically correct is now being determined by elected human beings. This is how things actually are. So what is it no time for within the church? Let's now for a moment consider our position. The Bible begins with a story. Adam and Eve are created by God and given the responsibility of caring for each other and the responsibility of exercising stewardship over God's creation. It's an ideal situation. But in order for them to flourish, to grow, and to mature, God has to bestow upon them a particular gift, a gift which no other creature has ever been given. The gift of free will. A gift which holds within its power the possibility of saying no. No to the revealed will of God and no even to God himself. The Garden of Eden story then reveals the consequences which flow from the misuse of our free will estrangement from God and the loss of our God-given right to dwell in the Garden of Eden where everything was really perfect. <laughs> in truth, the consequence of sin may be likened to a childhood game that I used to play. Set up a line of dominoes and tipple just one over and they all fall down. Through mankind's continued disobedience to the revealed will of God, we find ourselves increasingly estranged from God. And the world which God created and declared to be good becomes the fallen world which now we now inhabit. And if you want a biblical answer as to what is wrong with the world, the answer is given in two words. We are. <laughs> it's astonishing. But this knowledge is nothing new. Listen to this lament from Psalm 14, written nearly, well, over, well over, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, the psalmist says, the Lord looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if there is even one with real understanding, one who seeks for God. But no, all have turned away from God. If you read the Old Testament diligently, you will see that the Jewish peoples themselves 
were the first to recognize their predicament. They knew from the Ten Commandments that they were up to their knees in sin. And that no amount of tugging on their own bootlaces was ever going to get them out of it. They knew that. And so eventually, after centuries of hardship and suffering, they began to call on God for a saviour. I suspect that this is how many people come to faith. In our hearts, we do want the good life, but the fallen world often leads us astray. And not only does the world let us down, we let ourselves down by the things we say and do. And even when we do our best, we find there is not good enough. The most ancient and constant cry of the human heart sounds like this. God help us. <laughs> That's the most ancient prayer that human beings ever speak. And they've spoken it through the centuries. God help us. We are here tonight because we believe that at a certain point in history, at the exact time of God's choosing, God answered that prayer. And we hear in the prophetic words of Jesus... The kingdom of God is now drawing near. Turn from your sins and believe the gospel. Now you may agree with what I've shared with you up to now, but it still doesn't address the question which the Holy Spirit first laid on my heart. There is a time for everything under the sun. What is it now time for? within the church. I think we'll just have a quick break there and, and have a little chorus praise to give you a little bit of a rest. I don't want to overwhelm you with words. <laughs> um, he also said you could have a little stretch, so if you'd like to stand. It's always good to come to a time of praise, and that was lovely. But the question remains, what is it now time for within the church? Here's the situation. Secular society doesn't want to know the church. Other religions are increasingly persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. And the spirit of this world stands implacably against the one whom God has sent. We live today in difficult and dangerous times. So what are we to do? Just over two years ago, God spoke to me prophetically. And let me explain what I mean by that. God spoke to me in order that I might speak on his behalf. Now I say that in full knowledge that anyone who claims to have a word from God, which in truth is not from God, that person stands under the judgment of God. So I am fully aware of that situation as I share this with you now. Just over two years ago, God spoke to me and I found myself waking up at 4.30 a.m. one morning 
I'm wondering to myself, what am I doing waking up at this time? <laughs> and on this occasion, these words were given to me. The peoples of the world are coming more and more under the influence and power of evil spirits and demons. There was then a pause. And God then said, help me remake the world. And there was another pause. And then God said, take authority in your life of prayer. I, wrote, I actually got out of bed and wrote down those words. And then for the next three months, I prayed daily for an understanding of what these words could mean. And after three months, this is the kind of sense that came to me. The peoples of the world are coming more and more under the influence and power of evil spirits and demons. This is how things are. No beating about the bush. This is how things are. Secondly, help me remake the world. God is inviting us to change the situation. And lastly, take authority in your life of prayer. God is instructing us how to do it. This is how things are. This is what I want you to do. And this is how to do it. After three months of prayer, I realize that God is calling his people at this time to be prayer warriors. Prayer warriors. Prayer warriors. Yes, his church, his people, from 18 to 80, with one leg or two, with arthritis, a dicky heart, a blood pressure, God is calling his church to be prayer warriors. When the penny dropped for me, I then sat down and asked the Holy Spirit what God wanted me to pray for. Within two hours, five different aspects of our nation's life were given me to pray for. Five different aspects of our nation's life. And I was to pray not just once, but each and every day from the time those prayers were given me. We all know how easy it is to settle in our comfort zones and hedge away from the more challenging aspects of God's claim upon our lives. The essence of the word repent to any Christian community simply means this. Stop wandering off in all the ways of the world. You need to get moving in the direction that God wants you to go. Twelve months ago, I completed a two-part course on prayer under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and I really felt that the Lord was leading me and, and touching me as I prepared this course. And this course is actually directly related to the prophetic words that God had given me. So I want you to go home tonight and pray, pray about and consider the call of God which I now place before you. And I'm placing before you this, this call, not as a parish priest, and I've been a parish priest for 50 years. 
I'm placing this call before you prophetically. I'm saying this is a word from God to his church. Will you be prayer warriors for me? The course will strengthen both you and the life of the church in the nation, but remember, God has given every one of you free will. You have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. Am I going to respond to this word or am I going to ignore it? I pray that you will use your free will wisely and well. And unto God this night be all honor and glory and power now and forever. Amen.